I think we're live. I found him. I found Lucy. They're camped about a half mile over. I was just swinging back, and I seen their smoke. I bellied up a ridge, and there they was, right below me. Did you see Debbie? No. No, but I saw Lucy all right. She was wearing that blue dress, and she what was... What you saw wasn't Lucy. Oh, but it, it was, I tell you. What you saw was a buck wearing Lucy's dress. I found Lucy back in the canyon. Wrapped her in my coat. Buried her with my own hands. Thought it best to keep it from you. Oh. Did they... What was she? What do you want me to do? Draw your picture? Spell it out? Don't ever ask me. As long as you live, don't ever ask me more. and the best show on the internet. Shut up! Nobody, and I mean nobody, tackles issues like inflammatory talk. Shut up! And Mr. Midnight Movie. Shut up! And Jewish producer. Hello, son. Shut up! We tackle the things that nobody, nobody tackles. Hello, son. The man answers. Hello, son. Stop walking on eggshells. Shut up! Hello, son. Goofy Bone can get off his bloviated fat enchilada ass and start talking about La Raza. Hello, son. Oh, jacking it. Pink Daddy Joe Pete. Oh, j- jacking it. Pink Daddy Joe Pete. Whipping the skippy all day long. All day long. We're making a movie about white guilt. We're going to examine all these facts. Shut up. The civil rights movement today basically uh, protects criminals. Okay, stop interrupting me. We're making a movie about white guilt. Okay, stop interrupting me. Shut up. We're making a movie about white guilt. Done in a beautiful fashion. The documentary, at the same time, both prose and poetry. It's not the noble movement that it was. I'm above you on all these issues. I've been to the military. I have served in the capacity to protect your rights to blow me. To protect your rights to blow me. You need to tell me what my style is, you meth addict. I've been to the military. How do you know I'm a meth addict? I'm above you on all these issues. How do you know I'm a meth addict? You haven't served in the military. In fact, you wouldn't be fit for the military. I'm a racist, and I don't consider myself an especially evil person. What's this got to do with the price of rice in China? Well, I'm just telling you, I'm a better man than you are. You're a narcissist. We've established that. Okay, stop interrupting me. You could not defend the very rights you enjoy. You are the ultimate invalid, 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 invalid. I put stock in you. I'm wondering why Mr. Solutions isn't on Debbie Daly's show. What's this got to do with the price of rice in China? Money. I'm into aviation. Money. Power. Money. Power. Man boobs. Shut up. I see why Sick to Tank uh, Daddy's kicked his ass and kicked him out of the house early on. Man boobs. Shut up. I'm going to talk over you as loud as I can. I've got my speaker full blast to blow you away. Shut away. Up. Mr. Midnight Movie. My name is Delano. I have killed Mr. Midnight Movie. Stab that son of a bitch. This is money. Power. Money. Power. Tired. Money. Power. Money. Power. All right, what's going on, people? Yes. You're listening to another episode of Inflammatory Talk. I'm Jewish this... producer, and that's Mr. Midnight Movie. Yes. And uh, we have brought to you an inflammatory 
episode. And, uh, you know, we, uh, we were one of the first, uh, you know, people on YouTube that really kind of broke uh, the Playboy interview on YouTube. We were, I don't, we are, and the hits prove it. We got thousands of uh, views to a video we did where we did a computerized reading of the 1971 interview that John Wayne gave to Playboy magazine w before anybody else had posted it. That's correct. And, uh, uh, you know, I mean, look, it is a computerized reading of the voice. Uh, I think they perfected things in that, but it is the full interview. And, you know, though, I, I have to say that uh, I just watched some, and this is the first time, by the way, uh, I, 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 um, I put a link uh, in JP Skype on um, uh, an interview, because they recently, they, they recently talked about taking down John Wayne's, uh, the John, uh, removing the name from the John Wayne Airport. There is outrage. Yeah, uh, yeah, there's after, outrage. I mean, after his, this Playboy interview resurfaced, we resurfaced it a couple, a few years ago. Slow pokes. Yeah, and uh, it's been around for a while, but I, I, I have Should to say. View Oops. Yeah, I have a video. Do you want me to go ahead and play that? or? Why don't you play the, the yeah, yeah, play the, play the interview, and then I'm going to add more context to that, because... There's a whole kind of a little bit of a backstory of things that I've only heard, and I certainly could be wrong. Uh, but I want to say that these are things. This is hearsay that I've heard. But play the interview, and Ethan Wayne, his son, puts a very interesting take on uh, the Playboy interview. And I, uh, I, and this is the, like I said, the first time that I've ever heard him or any uh, of his children are. Or anybody related to him talk about that specific interview? Expressed by a long dead movie actor in an interview he gave nearly 50 years ago caused his name to be removed from an airport. That question has been raised about the John Wayne Memorial Airport in Santa Ana, Orange County, California, near Disneyland, 35 miles south of Los Angeles. In 1979, the airport was dedicated to the macho American icon who was a local resident and had just died of cancer. Wayne starred in more than 150 films, more than half of them westerns. Nominated for three Oscars, he finally won for 1969's True Grit. But in this woke era that has seen the removal of Confederate statutes, woke. new attention is being paid to inflammatory quotes from Wayne's interview published in Playboy magazine, May 1971. Like this one. I believe in white supremacy until the blacks are educated to a point of responsibility. That and more led to this proposal in the L.A. Times. It's time to take John Wayne's name off the Orange County Airport. Its author is L.A. Times columnist Michael Hiltzig. He's here to explain. Hiltzig. Also here to respond is Ethan Wayne, the sixth of John Wayne's seven children. He himself acted in several movies with his late father. Michael, the 1971 interview preceded the naming of the airport, so presumably those who made the decision to name the airport had awareness of these comments. Uh, sure, I think it was no secret that John Wayne held uh, uh, extreme right-wing views. Uh, this was part of his personal persona. Uh, the, the, the airport was named after him really not because there was any public clamor or community clamor to honor him, but it was part of a political deal so that the airport could get expanded and uh, the, the one political leader who opposed that agreed to uh, to this deal if John Wayne's name would go on the airport. Unbelievable. It's happened. a political move. Yeah. How much of this debate, this conversation, is due to the fact that there have been some real significant changes, politically speaking, in Orange County? You mentioned Orange County to me. I think of the, the, the sort of the heart of rock bed conservatism and republicanism. I think of Yorba Linda, Richard Nixon. I think of the John Birch Society having come out of that area. But it's changed. It's changed dramatically. I think of bankruptcy and coming out of it. Uh, in fact, the old Orange County was the Orange County we think of from 1971. It was the uh, hive of rock-ribbed uh, conservative republicanism uh, that was exemplified, in fact, 
by the political views of John Wayne, that Orange County does not exist anymore. It's much more diverse politically. Uh, minorities, uh, ethnic groups have a much stronger voice in Orange County today than they did then. And, and as we saw in November, uh, when the last remaining Republican members of Congress were turfed out by the voters, uh, it's become uh, right now a, a 100 percent Democratic uh, uh, delegation in Congress. Is it fair looking through a 2019 lens to hold John Wayne accountable for things that he said in 20, uh, pardon me, in, in 1971? Yeah, I, I think uh, the fact of the matter is that the views that he expressed... By the way, our video that we posted uh, five years ago has nearly 30,000 views. Not bad. Yeah. And there are some of the views about his uh, views on racism that are not as interesting or his views on many topics. I have over a million. So, uh, yeah. you know, and, and I wish more people would listen to it. Maybe a lot of people have read it as well. Um, I think we're, so, we're extremists even for 1971. That was not a prehistoric period. Uh, as I pointed out in my column, uh, the civil rights movement was at high tide at that point. Uh, Martin Luther King had been assassinated just three years before. In 1964 and 1965, we had federal legislation for civil rights. Rosa Parks uh, refused to give up her seat on the Montgomery bus in 1955. So these things were all in the air. And I think John Wayne was reacting to that movement. He wasn't expressing an old view. He was reacting to the, to the advances that, that we were seeing in the civil rights movement. Michael Hiltzig, thank you. Joining me now to respond is Ethan Wayne, who's not only John Wayne's son, also president of the John Wayne Enterprises and director of the John Wayne Cancer Foundation. Ethan, this is some real tough stuff. I, I don't know that you're going to try to defend the words, but let's at least let folks see what they were. Relative to gays, can we start with that? Uh, your father quoted in Playboy magazine, if we can put that on the screen, as saying the following. Americans will be completely fed up with these perverted films. He's then asked, well, what do you consider perverted? He talks about Midnight Cowboy, a story about two fags, and thinks that qualifies. Relatives to <laughs> blacks, people of color. Um, but we can't all of a sudden get down on our knees and turn everything over to the leadership of the blacks. I believe in white supremacy until the blacks are educated to a point of responsibility. And then with regard to Native Americans, one more of these I don't feel we did wrong in taking this great country away from them, if that's what you're asking. Our so-called stealing of this country from them was just a matter of survival. There were great numbers of people who needed new land, and the Indians were selfishly trying to keep it for themselves. And I did read the full interview, because I, 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 I didn't want to take anything out of context. Respond to that. Well, thank you for having me on and letting me respond. I think you do have to go to the context of that entire interview. This is an interview that took place over two days, and I believe the transcript was about eight hours long. It was a pretty contentious discussion over uh, politics and the film industry. So if we want to, let's start, I think he started with the, the gay term. He used the word, uh, he, used a, he used a terrible word, no doubt about it, but he used it not in the context of an individual's sexuality. He used it in the context of the changing landscape of the motion picture business, something that distressed him. Uh, you know, my father worked in Hollywood for 50 years, and Hollywood is probably, you know, one of the most progressive and diverse communities on earth. He didn't, uh, he didn't care what race, uh, gender, sexual orientation you were. Uh, he cared how well you did your job. He took everyone at face value. So uh, the second place you went, I think, was uh, the Native Blacks. American question. Black. Okay, do that one. Okay. So my father made a mistake uh, that some people make in interviews by repeating the language that the interviewer used. So that's where the term white supremacy came out. In fact, we dug through our archives and we found notes that my father wrote to people at the time who were concerned about his use of that term. And he explained that it was a mistake on his part. He repeated the interviewer's language. He should have said supremacy of responsible people. If you'll read the entire interview, you'll see that they were discussing a group that he believed was trying to use violence to gain power. And my father would never approve of that. He believed in the democratic system. 
So lastly, I think he went to uh, <laughs> the, the <Indian>. American Indians, <laughs> uh, Native Americans. And uh, I don't think anybody had a closer relationship to the Native Americans than John Wayne. He, he's being asked po- pointedly political questions about an issue that we've dealt with for a century and a half before my father gave the interview, and we're still, still dealing with it today. Uh, you know, it's a, it's a complex question. Uh, my father had a, a great personal respect for Native Americans. He worked with them, you know, for half his career. When John Wayne uh, and a film crew would come to Monument Valley or to a reservation, it was an e- economic boon for that tribe and those people. They appreciated him, and I think they all, anyone who knew him would remember him fondly. Uh, he had a great respect for them as a people and for their art and culture. How concerned are you? I, I know you're speaking to me from Irvine in Orange County, where I'm sure it's a great matter of pride to the Wayne family to have that airport named for your dad. How concerned are you that there will be this groundswell and that that nine-foot statue will come down and that the airport will lose its name? Well, obviously, we don't want our father attacked, and, and, and we don't want to be smirched by... Uh, by someone who's taking, you know, an, uh, words from an interview that are that's eight hours long and using them out of context. Look, they put my father's name on that airport for the same reason that they uh, that Congress voted to give him uh, a congressional gold medal for the same reason that the president decided to give him a medal of freedom. And it's recognition of a lifetime of significant contributions to this country, his community and to his industry. I think it would be an injustice to judge someone based on uh, an interview that's being used out of context. They're trying to contradict how he lived his life and how he lived his life was who he was. So any discussion of removing his name from the airport should include the full picture of the life of John Wayne and not be based on a single outlier interview from half a century ago. The argument being that that those quotes are not reflective of the interview in total, or at least of the transcript of all that was recorded over the course of those two days. Correct. And you, you, you don't you're think taking a, and you're taking a quote where he he uses a harsh term in, in relation to homosexuality, but he's not talking uh, negatively about homosexuality. He's talking about the negative direction that the film industry is taking uh, in regard to sexual ex- sex uh, violence and uh, nudity. And so he spent much more time in the article discussing the violence of a film called The Wild Bunch. Uh, He he had a formula for delivering uh, family entertainment in a way that's still appreciated today. And when he saw people coming in and trying to add a little bit more to sell more tickets, it was distressing to him. He thought it was bad for the film industry. And I think he, he thought it was bad for the fabric of the country in general you know, chipping away, desensitizing people to uh, nudity, sex, and violence. So, there you go on that. Yeah, and, and, and uh, are you looking at now... Uh, that was a are super you long video, by the way. The, uh, Do you have any com- comment to make on that? It was a 10-minute video. Why don't you summarize real quick and then... Well, I thought, I thought he had an interesting, uh, an interesting take on that. He... He just repeated what uh, the interviewer said about white supremacy. And I think that word is kind of a made-up word to a degree. And, um, you know, I, I, you know, I, don't re- I didn't read much about, like, how much um, flack he got from that. I mean, to, if, if, he, if, if John Wayne... Or any actor had done an interview like that today, he would be finished. Uh, he would be done. Um, but, uh, I mean, and, and there was, because I, I remember my father, you know, because he was in the film industry at that time. He'd just gotten, yep. he'd just been a few years out of the Air Force. Good old was, Boss Ross. Good old Boss Ross. And he was, uh, he was at Lawrence Merrick. And there were a lot of black veterans there, and they were kind of pissed off about the fact that he had stated that he was a uh, white supremacist. And I think it was, because the interview was 1971, and the film that I, he was shooting at the time, or doing at the time, or, or, or starting to shoot, was the film called The Cowboys. 
and uh, Roscoe, I believe it was Roscoe Lee Brown, uh, has a large role in that, and that's one of the only films where there is like a, a significant black lead in that in, in in one of John Wayne's film, and it's a really fully developed uh, character. And I, and I don't know if he picked that film to kind of say that I'm not a racist kind of thing because the Cowboys was the most progressive uh, Western that he'd ever done. And uh, it had uh, it had a black person in there. It had a Jewish kid in there. It had a Latin kid in there. And I think it was part Native American. Um, and Roscoe Lee Brown, from my understanding, was told by uh, a lot of other blacks and a lot of other political people, don't do this film. John Wayne is a racist. And he said that I'm just here to, you know, like here, I'm here to work on this film and make it the best way I can. And I heard they got along fairly well. I don't know if there's any other story uh, based on that. Mm -hmm. And it's also, I mean, The Cowboys, for me, is my favorite John Wayne film of the 70s. Uh, just from the uniqueness alone, and Bruce Stern is magnificent in that part. And just it's it's kind of it's 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 very different. It's it's it was I believe it was the first uh, PG film ever made, and I, I think I want to do a whole. I think I might do a, a, a show, maybe a ten, fifteen, even a half an hour show, based on the movie The Cowboys, mm -hmm. and why that is John Wayne's most unique film and my favorite film of his of the seventies. And uh, it was just, like I said, a very, uh, you know, just his most progressive Western. His most progressive film, let alone his mo the most progressive Western. It's about a veteran rancher risking everything when he recruits schoolboys to man a dangerous cattle drive. And, um, 1972. Right? And it was, from my, like I said, and from my understanding, it was the first... PG uh, Western, and I think it was the first because he, he he died in the shootest, and I think that was that was the first Western that he was killed in. Uh, I'm not. I hope yes. I'm, not, I'm not being a spoiler here, but you know, like I said, it's spoiler it's, it's a very, alert. Hey, did you see? Have you seen the Cowboys before? Uh, I Jake? did. After you mentioned it to me uh, about four or five, maybe after around the time we did the interview with uh, Scott Iman, uh, I watched. Uh, that movie and it was great. First time I'd seen it. It's it's a yeah. I mean, like I said, it, to me, it's a wonderful. I, I really enjoyed it. Bruce Stern steals the show in that film as the villain, but it, it is a great and wonderful film. And like I said, John Wayne to me will always be a hero. Uh, his just as an entertainer and. Portraying American values is brave. I know he never served in the military. A lot of people didn't. And just to me, he was just, you know, he was a hard worker. And if you've ever read any of Scott Iman's book, the years it took to cultivate the man he was, he was a very intelligent, very bright, very smart man uh, who was a very in depth person. If you listen to the interview, the Playboy interview, uh, and you're able to get through the, um, the the robotic talking and stuff like that, you will find a very thoughtful, very intelligent man. And I want to say, the first person who uh, who read the, 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 the stuff with me was, was, was on Debbie Daly's show, on her blog talk radio show, and then I got the idea to mm. post it on YouTube. So I have Debbie to really thank uh, for that uh, Playboy thank you interview, so much, Debbie. That, yeah, thank, yeah. I mean, thank you so much. You 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 brought me out there to 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 do that, and now it's it's paying off. Eight, what is it? Seven, eight years later. But uh, like I said, it's, we'll keep it's, an eye on the numbers of that video. Also, uh, we started uh, five days ago. We had about twenty four thousand uh, 
views, I, and now it's uh, upwards of twenty seven thousand. So it's uh, yeah. it's been and, and, and there may be more. Who knows? But like I said, sure. and hopefully Scott Iman's uh, Scott Iman's book will do a little bit better too because that was uh, that's a very good book. It's it goes in depth to his life story. I mean, he was a person who took calculus. He was not uh, he was not a dunce. He almost went to the Naval Academy. And uh, very smart and a very in-depth and very intellectual person. And um, I'll, I'll end it on that because I don't want to go more in-depth. And I'll talk more about the Cowboys on my next show when I do a John Wayne show. It will probably more than likely be about the film The Cowboys. And it will be an in-depth on why I think it's a great film and why I think it is the best John Wayne film of the 70s. Uh, JP, do you have Shut anything up else to add? Internet. Shut no, up. I, no. And I, mean I think we're good for tonight. Thank you again for listening like to Inflammatory Talk. Shut up. And Mr. Midnight uh, Movie. Shut we appreciate up. you stopping by. And we'll keep uh, pressing Shut the envelope, the uh, if that's even a phrase, there. and we'll, Hello, we'll continue to hunt Hello, down... Hello, Hunt down all of these inflammatory stories. Hello, son. Goofy Bone can get off his... Do you have anything else you want to add? Nope. Start talking about Hello, son. Jockin' it. Pink Daddy Joe Pete. Jockin' it. Pink Daddy Joe Pete. Whipping the skippy all day long. All day long. We're making a movie about white guilt. We're going to examine all these facts. Shut up! The civil rights movement today basically uh, protects criminals. Okay, stop interrupting me!